Zenyu Shokwetan Drin Hozo, hello. I'm Karen Routledge, Karen Routledge Uye, Kwan Lin, Uni and Jay, Scottish Ye English Ich A, um, Parks Canada U Agasidla. So I work for Parks Canada as a historian. I have mostly Scottish and English ancestors, and I live in Whitehorse on the traditional territories of the Kwanlin Dun First Nation and the Ta'anquichen Council. And I'm really honored today to introduce Georgette McLeod, who's going to give our third um, lecture in the David Newfeld Memorial Lecture Series. So I'm just going to share a picture of David and talk about him for a minute. Um, Yeah, so like me, David Neufeld was a Parks Canada historian in Whitehorse, and he passed away in 2020, but I think very few of us who ever met him will be able to forget him. He, um, his, he's always going to be a model for me of someone who was so generous, willing to learn, open of spirit, and he was also a great storyteller. Um, over the years, David spent a lot of time in Dawson working with Georgette, and I know because he told me that he really learned a lot from her. And I think to use one of David's favorite expressions, he would be really chuffed to know that she's giving this lecture today. And certainly myself and the other organizers were thrilled that Georgette agreed to do this. Um, so uh, Georgette McLeod was raised in the Trondekwichin traditional territory. She is a Trondekwichin citizen of the Wolf Clan. And her mother is Bertha McLeod, who taught Han, Han language at the local school in the 1990s. Her grandparents are Mason and Martha McLeod, who adopted Georgette when she was born. Um, Georgette spent a good part of her youth with her grandparents, traveling around her traditional territory, and also, to, also visiting other Yukon First Nations during negotiations for uh, Together Today for Our Children Tomorrow. And Georgette has been working for Tondekwichin for the better part of 20 years, primarily in the Heritage Department. She's worked on numerous language revitalization projects and resources for all ages, and she'll be talking about one of those today. Um, I don't know Georgette as well as David did yet, but in the past several years, I've just seen her bring dedication, skill, um, kindness, and laughter to everything that she does. And I'm really looking forward to hearing her speak today. So Shonithan Masicho, thanks everyone. And I'll pass it over to Georgette. Masi Karen. And uh, I just wanna say Masicho to the organizers of uh, this lecture. I, I felt honored um, by receiving um, an invitation, uh, particularly from Aaron Neufeld, who, uh, who is David's daughter. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm honored to be able to share this knowledge with you today um, about, uh, about some of the projects, particularly one project uh, on a book that I co-wrote with uh, Elder Percy Henry. So I will open up my presentation to share with you today. <clears throat> Apologies, just taking time to open the, the presentation. All right. Um, all right, so this, uh, this, is, uh, this is Percy Henry. Uh, he's an elder, uh, he is Tronda Kwichin, uh, but he is also, uh, he is also Dago Kwichin. Um, and so I'm going to be speaking about uh, my work with uh, with Percy Henry. First of all, I just want to do um, an introduction of myself. Drin Hozo, Chongre, George at McLeod, Chongre, Denaju, Legit, Dawson City, Hooch, in Trondequichin, Ra, Treda, Hok, I, Jurdit, A, Masi. I just spoke uh, in the Han language um, to introduce myself, and I am. Um, I'm, my name is Georgette McLeod. My uh, First Nation name is Lidget, um, who I had the privilege of receiving the name uh, from Percy's uh, parents, uh, Joe and Annie Henry, when I was very young. And it means tea because I used to invite them in for tea um, to my grandparents' house when I was when I was just a wee four or five year old. 
um, I would call them in from the street uh, while they were walking by and they would come and have tea, tea and bannock with my grandparents. Uh, so today I'm going to be speaking to you about Han language revitalization uh, project that I worked on with Percy uh, in the community uh, of Dawson City, uh, the heart of Trondekwichin. Um, so this is Percy Henry at 95 years old. He is now 95 years old, and he is our oldest living Trondekwichin citizen in uh, in Dawson City. Um, he originally uh, comes from uh, Dagoquichin, which is in the Blackstone area of our traditional territory. And uh, he, him and his family had moved to Mooseside um, in the early 1930s after spending uh, a long period of time on the land uh, with his parents. Um, he was born out on the land um, and, uh, and, and he then later made his home at Moosehide um, with his parents. And then uh, his, he's got such a long extensive history of moving around, not only within our traditional territory, but also um, in various other parts in the Northwest Territories and Alaska, um, by waterway, by trail, by road. Um, he has uh, quite the varied history. But today, I'm going to be sharing a, a bit of a journey of Percy's story um, told through a children's storybook that we worked on together. Um, Percy has been a pillar of the Han language program today. Many of the projects comes from the work that Percy has done with us, and he has been our strongest supporter to keep the Han language going in Dawson City. Uh, Percy has always been a patient, has always been patient with us and, and has encouraged us along the way in our journey to learn the Han language. Percy always uh, tells us to work hard, but be patient. I feel fortunate to be able to know what I know and although I'm still a learner I'm getting to a point point where I want to seek out more in-depth knowledge with him um, but we with with the language but we only have Percy Percy is the last of the speakers in this community and we've been really lucky up to this point but our time is limited now we lost Edward Roberts uh, earlier last year and he and Percy used to work together with language quite a bit and we've lost so many elders in the, in the last 20 years um, who used to work with the language as well. Percy often states that he has nobody to talk to. Uh, so he is always happy to have visitors come to, 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 to speak with him in either the Gwich'in or the Han language when they visit with him. And he tries to do that, but uh, it's not very frequent. So I just wanted to touch a bit about the knowledge that we have worked with Percy that we take from him and, and what he teaches us and how we apply it in the language curriculum and teaching and teaching that we do in the community and at the school. There are some values that we work to follow as we are learning and teaching the language. These are the seven pillars that we try to employ when we teach the Han language. So the first one that you see on the on the left of your screen is Da Ole. That is our traditional law. It is our basic guidelines on their value. We have values and beliefs um, that contribute to following our Da Ole. Um, and some of those things are like being resourceful and being respectful, not only in the classroom, but in our everyday life. And and how we apply it within the school is um, through some of uh, some of the work that is through communication and thinking and personal and social awareness and responsibility. Um, another pillar um, to the middle of the screen is Schlitchin Trigel. And this means we all come together. Um, so we want to engage our students by bringing them together and helping them to learn with each other and learn um, from each other. And we also want to have active learning all the time. So that means that uh, that we're trying to converse and share with each other um, through some of the projects that we do with our with our students. We also have aha do hor. That's that means play we are playing out it's work we're, we're playing outside. But it but it really implies that we want to explore our own world around us. And uh, and we so we need to take the time to get outside and spend time on the land, um, and that's always been an important piece to to Percy. You know, he he's an adventurer at heart, and he always wanted to make sure that we all we we stay connected to the land. 
And so we want to be able to have times through our teaching to be able to take our students and young ones out on the land to see new things, to, to um, have good physical well-being while working on the land. And I, I recall some of the work that Percy used to do. He used to work in a sawmill, and that's actually where he had learned to to, to be immersed in the Han language with uh, another Han speaker, uh, Stanley Roberts. And it was it was through that physical well-being of working in a sawmill in, in Mayo in the 19, in the 19, late 1940s and 50s, he he was able to not only be physically strong, but he he had he had good focus and was able to pay attention to uh, to um, conversations that he had with Stanley while he was learning the Han language. So he himself is a, not only a learner of the Han language, but he is also a teacher. And uh, and it's it's incredible that uh, he was able to pick up the language as quickly as he could through those opportunities of spending time outside. Um, below that one is Nihei Dach A Sho Trin Lai, is we are happy to see you. Uh, we all in in our in our classroom settings and things that we do out on the land as a group, we want all all of our learners to be feel welcome. We want to have provide an open, relaxing environment for them to make them feel comfortable while they're learning. And uh, and we want them to know that we are happy to be with them too. And and below that one is Honzo Hot Tru Da I is being aware. Um, being aware, this not only is is something that we have to imply in our personal lives, you know, I think of times when I go out hunting on the land, I have to be aware of my surroundings, I have to be aware of the people I'm with when I'm, when I'm engaging in, in, in a practice that, uh, um, that has been passed down to me, um, like hunting, um, when we're hunting for our food is being aware and respectful of the things that you're doing out there, while you're, you have good intentions to be able to take an animal. And this is a kind of, um, this is kind of a way of thinking that we want to apply to our students, uh, for them to be aware of their surroundings, um, but also being aware that not everybody learns at the at the same pace. And so it, it's important for us teachers to be aware of our students, but it's also our student students to be aware of each other and, and also to be able to reflect back on that. Um, so it's important to have self-awareness and it's also, you know, um, important to self-regulate. And, um, you know, when I'm out and I'm, I know that, uh, you know, this is a very simple example, but I think of my hunting experience when I go out, I also have to regulate myself and be patient because there's times that I could be hunting for days and hours and the, the days can get pretty long when you're when you're trying to hunt for your your food and uh and it's important to just um regulate yourself so that way you're not getting worked up about or getting impatient and and you know as Persia says you have to be patient you have to work hard but be patient and so when I'm out doing activities like that uh, I try to keep that in mind so it's important that's an important thing for for Percy um, to express to us on, on a continuous basis while we're learning the language too. And also Anna Cha is take care. So not only it's taking care of ourselves, um, carrying our enthusiasm with each other, um, but also being enthusiastic about the learning process in home language because it's not an easy language to learn. And so it's, uh, we try to bring enjoyment through um, fun activities, um, through games, and uh, to try and build that enthusiasm. And, uh, and it's also about being a role model. So you, you're, if you're expressing care for others, you're, you're expressing, you're, you're demonstrating to others that you're, you, you're, you're seeking the good out of people. And so it's important to, to demonstrate that uh, uh, being a good role model, and also being you know, that our expression when I work with the other um, language teachers is like happy teachers, happy students. <laughs> and then last of all is Honzo Dachin, which means we all do our best. And uh and you know, through that mistakes happen and mistakes are okay. But as long as we're we're 
correcting them in a positive way um, and having those conversations when we're you when we're you know when we're having a hard time pronouncing in the language um, then you know we're we're leaving time and space to be able to to work and build on um, correcting it in our way and uh, and so I try to make this a, a fun aspect when I'm teaching uh, to uh, my students, whether they're, you know, three years old, or if they're 23 years old, um, I've had, I've taught all, all ages in the, for the Han language, and, uh, and I employ the same, um, uh, same value about doing, doing the best you can to, to, uh, to work on learning the language, and for those of you who have learned um, an Indigenous language, um, you know, if you have learned an Athabascan language, it's um, there's so much embedded into the language, and it's really about when I when I learned the language, I learned a lot about the not the nouns. But now a lot of my knowledge comes from the verbs and the actions um, of the language, and and uh, and I've really um, kept my focus on in that area in the language. Um, while uh, working on ma on many projects uh, over the years. So while we're trying to find different ways of reaching to reaching out um, to our students, we decided that we wanted to have um, an opportunity to um, to reach out to people in different ways, whether it's through um, interactions, individual interactions, class uh, settings, um, remote learning, um, and especially in the last few years, um, a lot of things have gone to remote learning. And, uh, and so in, in, in that time period, I was able to uh, work on this project, this new, uh, this children's book uh, with Percy. Um, but I wanted him to be a central piece in this story. And so uh, this was one of the ways we were able to reach out to um, different different audiences um, online. And uh, I this is an, a printed published book, but it's also an audio book that we have um, accessible through our Tondagwichin um, government site. And so I'll have a chance to share the story after. So, um, like I said, Should Say is a book dedicated to Percy Henry for continuing for his continuing efforts in teaching and sharing the Han language. Percy was born to go, which in it, um, to Annie and Joe Henry. These are his parents um, on the Ogilvy River. And he, he was raised in the Blackstone country, but he moved to Mooseide around 1935. And it was at Moosehide that Percy had his most exposure to growing up with the Han language. But his, his biggest um, exposure uh, of learning the language was really spending his time with Stanley Roberts at a sawmill in the Mayo area. So th this is a great photo of Joe and Annie Henry, and this is how I remember them growing up. And this is, I just wanted to show this picture of the of the th uh, three different generations uh, of the Henry family. So on the left is is Grandma Annie Henry and uh, their and then Grandma Annie's uh, great 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 grandchild um, Oren Henry, um, Percy actually, and uh, and then he's with his grandpa um, Percy. So I thought that was a sweet photo, and this was at uh, one of grandma grandma annie's birthday parties um in 1958 uh, percy married mabel henry mabel taylor and uh who became mabel henry and they raised their children in dawson city and by the way um percy and mabel's 64th and wedding anniversary um uh, uh, just happened in october on october 24th so um they've they've uh, been married for quite some time um but soon after they were married um percy um quit his job at the mayo sawmill after working there for almost 10 years 
um, and he um, he continued to move full time to operate the brainstorm river boat between Dawson City and Old Crow um, to ship supplies um fish uh, and fish was a, a huge commodity then to be able to supply the dog teams um in the old crow area um so a lot of the fish would come from the yukon river and he would be a part of shipping um which whichever supplier was providing the fish to uh to uh, the people who had dog teams in old crow of course that has changed now um people don't have as many dog teams and our fish shop um supply has depleted in in the Yukon River the the population has dropped dramas, drastically in both the Chama and the Chinook salmon but to get back to Percy's story in 1960 he also worked he also operated and trained um staff on the the George Black Ferry the the Campbell Ferry and the McQuestion Ferries when when needed so he traveled throughout um, the Yukon to to provide that uh, service since he was so knowledgeable about his um, operating uh, operating when he was operating the brainstorm. Um, and in the winters, Percy um, wor worked for Yukon Highways, where he eventually spent three years on the top of the world highway and three years on um, on the Dempster Highway. And this is a picture of him and his family and um, him and, and Mabel and, and their children. So in 1968, Percy took on a much larger role as the chief of Trondequachin on the top of on top of his highways job. He, he remained chief until 1984, at which time he left to continue working for Yukon Highways as a as a full time employee. He eventually retired from the Yukon government in the late 1980s uh, after he finished his work with as chief for Trondequichin in 1984. He, for, for since that time, since he worked as a chief, he still continued to be involved in the politics as an elder in the community. Um, he was one of the signatories and the elders to sign the Trondequichin final and self-government agreements in 1998. And you can see him in the background there. He, he's dressed to the nines in his suit there. In his later years, Percy became an active member on many Yukon committees and councils, such as Porcupine Caribou Management Board, an elders representative with the Council of Yukon First Nations, a member of the Yukon Geographical Place Names Board, a member of the Yukon Advisory Council on First Nation Child Welfare, and a member of Dawson District Renewable Resources Council and a member of Trochek Steering Committee. He spent a number of years working on joint heritage projects with other nations as well. And you can see uh, in the, when I started working with Tronda Gwichin in 1999 on a full-time basis, um, my first supervisor actually was David Neufeld. And David uh, um, was tasked with uh, um, <clears throat> working uh, with Trondequachin to develop uh, the Trochek management plan. And Percy was a member uh, uh, of the steering committee. I was the secretariat and David was um, was our, our Parks Canada um, counterpart who sat on the committee um, with Percy. And so in those early years, we spent a lot of time together exploring Trochak. It's uh, Trochak heritage site, discussing the heritage values of that site, and eventually, you know, develop, uh, bringing it to a point where it is considered a national historic site now. And that was the result of the work of, of the committee uh, working with, uh, with David Neufeld. Today, Percy has dedicated his time in, to keeping the Han language alive. Although Percy was born Gwich'in, he was immersed into the language, into the Han language, uh, and uh, and eventually became a teacher in the community and a and a and a huge advocate for the Han language revitalization work. He he retired from highways, from trapping, from politics, but he says I'm never retiring from from his from his language work. He has shared so many aspects of his personal and professional life over the years. Um, we have an uh, incredible amount of documentation of the years that we have spent with Percy. 
Um, he spends a lot of time coming in to visit us at the Han language office um, and the heritage office uh, when he was when he was more mo mobile. Um, he's not so much uh, today, but he still insists that he wants to ensure that we learn as much Han language as we could. And there are times that we would be sitting at his house up to four to five hours with him while we're while he was sharing his stories and his language with us. We try to continue to do that work today. So as a result of those numerous years of work that we have done with Percy, should say is one of the products of his language work, should say is a story about a grandpa told in the Han language and made, and it's made simple enough for young audiences to enjoy. And as I started the story, uh, Percy soon became the inspiration because a lot of the activities that the grandpa in the story does are similar to what Percy does in his own life or has done in his own life. I wanted to share a story. I wanted the story to be about anybody's grandpa. It could be your grandpa. It could be anyone who does these activities in their lives for enjoyment or if they do it for their culture or if it's just what their family does. This, this book speaks to the power of elders sharing their knowledge with the next generation and the importance of being surrounded by family and community from a young age. The vibrant illustrations that Susan McCallum created are based on the actual photos of Percy and his family members, and they are all sourced from the collection of the Trondekwichin Heritage Department but also from Percy's personal photo collection. Behind each page is a bit of special history. After providing the photo, uh, photos to Susan, the illustrator, to capture uh, Percy in her artwork, she also wanted to visit with Percy and his wife, Mabel, to hear from them on what, they, what can be included in the book. As the book developed, Percy told Susan, you gotta have the Northern Lights. You gotta have the food that I eat. You gotta have fish. You gotta have the landscape of the mountains of where I come from. I also wanted uh, Susan to demonstrate the importance of portraying the land and of being on the land. Showing the landscape is showing a very big part of per who Percy is. So you can see in this, in this image, um, there is, there's Northern Lights, there's fish, there's the cache. Uh, he wanted to make sure there was a cache and he wanted to make sure the mountains were identified in the background. You know, he, um, he also, he says, you got to have a baby in a swing. And this is actually a, an image. This is not, this is something he just wanted. So we included it. Um, he wanted to show something about the connection to our young ones. Um, and in the background in that photo where the, with the baby swing is actually Joe and Annie's cabin at Mooseheim. So it's, uh, you can see how much of an imprint that Percy has had on, uh, on the book. So, you know, Percy has traveled many miles on his, on his homeland from Blackstone to Moosehide. So we wanted to capture those types of images in the book. So this photo is an inspiration to this photo uh, of Percy walking around. Um, Percy always walked around in, in from the time that we spent um, with him when I started working in Heritage. A lot of the work that we did together was walking around on the land. We also had photos of him uh, trapping, um, setting up traps because in the early, in his early days um, as a teenager, actually, um, he spent time out on the land with his father um, at trapping around Hungry Lake, uh, it, which is in the Blackstone and the Peel watershed. And uh, so later on, he demonstrated to us um, how he set up his um, Martin boxes. And so we had a couple of photos from, from that. And that led to this image uh, illustration being placed into the book um, on his trapping uh, experience. Percy and his, and his family had lived in the Blackstone area for quite some time, you know, when per from the time that Percy was young um, and they trapped uh, 
quite a bit in both the Blackstone and the Ogilvy and the Peel regions um, before he took up any of his other jobs, uh, as I described earlier. Um, but he, uh, he acquired all of his skill, his trapping skills from his father, Joe. So there's moments that we capture, capture like this of Percy uh, uh, when we're out doing some of the work on the land and, you know, and various places throughout the traditional territory. But we always capture fun photos like this. He, he, he's, uh, he's turning the bannock, making sure it's uh, uh, nice and crisp and golden for all of us to enjoy. And so we wanted to capture this illustration in the book of Percy uh, cooking. And, uh, and, and he always wanted to have uh, images of, of, what represented potentially his grandchildren or anyone's grandchildren child and, and so you can see the young girl really uh, admiring and looking on his the uh, on to sh should say in this uh, in this illustration since percy has spent many years uh, hunting also in his homeland um, you can see the richardson mountains in the background uh, this is further up in the peel region um, where his family's uh, trapping cabin was. Um, but uh, he also, uh, for numerous years, um, trapped, hunted, and fished in, his, in and around his homelands. And so this is one of his photos of later years when he, uh, when he would go out hunting. And uh, so since that was, that's a big aspect of his life, um, we wanted to incorporate that into, into an illustration into his book. And, um, and so this is uh, based on that photo. Also, he, he always reminded me, he always reminded that we need to keep our connection to our history and, uh, and how stories, how these stories um, transmit knowledge. Um, and, you know, that's how the name of the, of the Heritage Department came about, is about um, bringing knowledge through from the past and it's done out and taught at all it's how we come through the past that's uh, that's what he calls the heritage department so um so bringing that cultural piece in um you can see from this photo this is a photo from the from the very first musai gathering in 1993 um this was the start of uh, cultural revitalization um, one of the one of the pieces of cultural revitalization in the Dawson area and at Moosehide was to bring um, a celebration to recognize and honor our culture. And so, in this photo, Percy is wearing a piece of history in a, in in itself. Uh, Annie, his mom, made the tunic, made this tunic for Joe um, from their early years uh, when they used to go singing and dancing in the 1970s um, around the Yukon Territory. And that is really around also the time when, um, when Together Today for Our Children Tomorrow started in 1973. There was many gatherings in many communities and uh, Joe and Annie would go and sing and dance at uh, at various uh, in various communities, and also um, during time of like fun times during like the 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 rendezvous and White Horse and uh, and other competition uh, song and dance competitions uh, throughout um, throughout the Yukon too. So these tunics were made for these perform for these dance performances, and so Percy held on to this tunic. Um, that was passed on to him and uh, and and he wanted to wear this in honor of his parents uh, and also um, ensuring that uh, that 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 history is continuing to be brought forward and um, and during this first Musai gathering in 1993 um, even though Percy is holding a drum he there was there actually was a uh, nobody that could sing and dance any of the Han songs um, during that first Musai gathering. And the only one that really knew a little bit about song and dance was Archie Roberts, who is a good friend and elder um, uh, that was also a huge supporter of making uh, the Han language um, happen in, in 1993. But today, um, Han singing is alive and well. And uh, those songs, um, uh, that we sing um, were in safekeeping in Alaska, and we we uh, 
since they came home in the mid 1990s. Um, it's a it's a piece um, that has come back to um, revitalize our culture once again. So we wanted to ensure that we included that photo um, in this in this book as an illustration uh, to represent his, uh, that that connection that he had with his with his culture. And then we have fun photos like this of Percy. Um, it looks like he's an expert uh, uh, violinist um, or fiddle player, um, you know, because he was he's a big lover of music, song and dance and music. Um, and he, he particularly loves the the Gwich'in fiddle dances uh, whenever um, they're held um, further north uh, with his uh, Gwich'in elders and Gwich'in friends and elders and and so um, we captured this photo uh, as a as a fun piece because he 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 never knew how to play an instrument himself, but he loved um, he loved music. And um, and so he actually owned this violin, and uh, we we um, we took photo. We had a photo session with him wanting to hold the violin, and he's got some great little stories around song and dance, not only from from the community but also from from his uh, granddaughter that he likes to tell quite often. So um, from this photo, we have an, an illust illustrated image of him playing. Um, playing musical instruments uh, uh, with his granddaughter, um, Randy, who uh, is related to as a story. I don't have time to tell today, but it's a really cute story. So, um, uh, so we wanted to make sure that we included that. And then we also wanted to make sure because Percy, um, Percy also has a strong connection to the church and uh, um, his, his, his mom and dad, um, were religious and they attended church on a regular basis and uh, he, he wanted to ensure that that aspect of his life was also incorporated into this book and so from this image that you see with uh, one of the reverends that used to work in in Dawson and him at Moosehide um, we can see that uh, this similar um, outfit is is in the illustration and um I just wanted to briefly mention um, in the background is um, is also um, recognition of one of his uh, brothers, uh, Isaac Henry, who built that cache um, that currently sit, sits on the lawn of the Donald Jajo Cultural Center. So you can see how all these stories and images are so connected um, and how we, we garnered so much inspiration from Percy and his family members. Um, and to uh, recognize and honor all of his connections in his life. Um, we always captured photos of Percy having fun and, and he is a jokester and he has the best sense of humor and he has the funniest jokes. And uh, he always made us at ease while we were learning the, la uh, the language and when, whenever he laughed at us, but he always made a fun joke of, uh, of uh, teasing us about it, and uh, and it was so easy to laugh with him. And there's times that we also had to gather inspiration, um, like I said, from other family members. So there's this great image of his brother Victor Henry, who is showing off his fine dancing moves in this picture, and uh, and so um, we show the same thing in in the in the book itself. Uh, uh, this in this case Percy dancing with the dance stick and then having dancers in the background um, to to uh, incorporate the the um, the dancing um, uh, when we sing when we sing our Han songs and then there's these lovely photos of more connections to all we want I want to include these photos of Percy because he always loved to sit by uh, young his uh, his um, younger family members or his grandchildren. Um, and he always, he never refused uh, um, having, uh, if a baby or, you know, a little one is offered to sit on his lap, he never refused and he loved spending time with children. So this is his, one of his nieces uh, um, when they were spending time down at, at a camp at Cash Creek. 
And here's another one at one of our literacy sessions in Whitehorse uh, that we attended. And uh, this was uh, one of uh, one of the other teachers, uh, uh, the, uh, daughter who came with us to the to the literacy session. And so from these photos, they inspired an illustration like this, uh, um, where uh, grandpa is reading, um, reading to children and, uh, and and children sitting on his lap while he's reading the story. He's actually reading another um, a book that uh, he helped to translate and uh, that Susan McCallum illustrated. <laughs> um, it's a uh, it's the book Jijikcho uh, Gina uh, I. What do you see? Uh, big moose, big moose. What do you see? And he he always loved sharing stories with uh, little ones, um, and particularly with his own grandchildren. Like this photo, for instance. He loved to uh, share stories with them, and uh, he is sitting here with his granddaughter, uh, Teresa, who is, uh, this was taken back in, in, in at Black City in 2004, where his parents uh, had lived for a period of time in their time, before Percy's time, and they had lived in, in the Black, at Black City, and this is up in the Blackstone region. Uh, you, people drive back, past it daily uh, along the Dempster Highway, um, but uh, it's an important uh, part of our history in the Blackstone region of the Henry family. And you can see here how we've taken the photo into the illustration um, uh, to include that uh, because we wanted to emphasize that Percy loved to tell stories of the past. Um, he still does uh, to this day. And, and Susan was so great at capturing the likeness of Percy in a lot of these illustrations. And then we have moments when you look at Percy, you know, he has good stories and so expressive in sharing them. But then there, we have these great moments where um, just for some unknown reason, we wanted, he, he put his hands up like he was praying and uh, he was just so grateful to be out on the land um, and all the work that we did with him over, over the years. So Percy has shared profound <laughs> teachings with us over the years. And since, since he has done so much work um, with and for the youth, you know, there's a lot that we can say about, uh, about him. You know, one of, the, one of his biggest quotes about working with, uh, with him was that, you know, it's, he had stated that you have to listen to the youth, you have to respect their knowledge, because they teach us to, they will be our future leaders. Soon youth will show how we lived. We need to open our arms to the youth and teach them so our culture and heritage won't, won't be lost. We need to listen to them to give the youth hope for the future. You know, once the highways were built, we lost our kids. We lost our, their, they lost their heritage. The youth are the grassroots of our future gener future government. And it's up to us if we want to keep our culture and our language going. So we must teach them. You know, so these are important words to capture from Percy and, and like I said, in incredible inspiration and profound uh, to, to have these, to have him around um, with us still um, to share. And so, as, you know, so we want to make sure that uh, we in included that acknowledgement to our young people in the illustration shown here. You can see in the bottom left there, Percy has his arms up. He's in the boat with some youth and he's waving to his uh, to his parents who are sitting on the bench um, at Mooseide um, because it's about bringing our past through to bringing our heritage through the past. And so uh, the two previous photos that you saw, it was amalgamated into this one image. Um, and, uh, you know, they have such incredible, meaningful, these are such incredible, meaningful images that Perseus has shared with us over the years. And, uh, and I just love the powerful image of Percy with his, with his hands in the air and the image of his homeland, um, one of his, his homes, at, uh, which is Moosehide. And the beautiful image of his parents um, that we have um, from, from his family uh, all pulled together at the end of the book. So Percy 
as the last Han speaker of the, the Trondac dialect, Percy's contribution to the work of keeping the Han language alive has been significant. He's worked with people throughout the territory, but documentation with linguists really started in the late 1970s, along with Stanley and Archie Roberts and a number of other elders who have passed, passed on now. Percy's life's work in language is strongly influenced not on, only by the landscape, but the people that he spent time with and visited with. His, his grandma and grandpa, all the elders at Moosehide and the people who lived along the river all the way down to Alaska. With no genera generational transmission of the Han language, the stakes are high for the challenging work of language revitalization. As a process of reclamation and of evolution, there's a lot of things about the language that we certainly have lost. But the one thing that I realize is it is really the grounding piece for learning our identity. It holds a lot of knowledge. It holds the stories. It holds the things that we have in relation to other people like your kin. It holds stories about travel and about movement on the land. It shares information about bringing awareness to the place that you're in. This is all at the heart of Percy's work in these last few years. He has been gifting the language to the next generation, and we hope that they will pick it up. Masi Cho. Masi, Georgette. Um, I heard Georgette give a version of this presentation a while back, and I really was hoping she would agree to give it for this audience as well. And I think I appreciated it even more the second time, um, especially having some more time to look at the slide about the Daole, the principles. So yeah, um, thank you again, Georgette. And yeah, we really appreciate you doing this. Yes, and so I just wanna finish off Oh, sorry, it's breaking up. I just wanted to finish off mm. um, by reading out the Shitsei book. Oh, yeah. It's a very short, um, it's a short illustrated children's book. Um, and so I'll, uh, I'll attempt to, uh, I'll, I'll just share it and, um, and read it out for you. All right, so should say my grandpa. Should say my grandpa. Jit should say Dean A should say Oak knotted Jack. This is my grandpa. My grandpa is walking around. Jit should say Dean A should say hell, don't I? This is my grandpa. My grandpa is trapping. Jit should say Dean A should say ka o te. This is my grandpa. My grandpa is cooking. Jit should say Dean A should say Najre. This is my grandpa. My grandpa is hunting. Jit should say Dean A should say Oh, Hall, this is my grandpa. My grandpa is drumming. Jit should say Dean J. Should say Ed de Anne. This is my grandpa. My grandpa is singing. Jit should say Dean J. Should say Edlo. This is my grandpa. My grandpa is laughing. Jit should say Dean J. Should say Shech o da. This is my grandpa. My grandpa dances with me. Jit should say Dean A. Should say Shech o This is my grandpa. My grandpa is reading with me. Jit should say Dean A. Should say Dano ja ha she dak. This is my grandpa. My grandpa tells me a story of the past. Should say what I need fun. I love my grandpa. Mussy.
Masi Cho for yeah. having me today. <laughs> yeah. Masi, Georgette. Masi.